Hello, my name is Leroy Cresswell and I'm with Orca Kilroy Academy. And today we're going to do a hands-on demonstration of exponential growth in phytoplankton in culture. Phytoplankton, also called microalgae, are microscopic single-celled plants that live in the water column both in freshwater and in marine environments. As a major component of primary productivity in our coastal waters, they are a major food source for filter feeding animals such as bivalve mollusks, sponges, and tunicates, as well as zooplankton, small, often microscopic animals that as primary consumers are at the base of the food chain consumed by larger crustaceans and fish. Phytoplankton do not undergo sexual reproduction, but rather go through mitosis or fission, that's where cells split, producing two daughter cells. Therefore, phytoplankton populations in acceptable environmental conditions and provided sufficient light and nutrients will increase exponentially until an essential nutrient or some environmental condition is exhausted. Typically, the first organism splits into two daughter organisms, who then each split to form four, who split to form eight, and so on. In the exponential growth model, Population increase over time is a result of the number of individuals available to reproduce without regard to resource limits. In exponential growth, the population size increases at an exponential rate over time, continuing upward as shown in this figure. The line or curve you see in the figure shows how quickly a population can grow when it doesn't face any limiting resources. The line creates a shape like the letter J and is sometimes called a J curve. But in reality, the growth of most phytoplankton populations depends at least in part on the available resources in their environments, nutrients, light, and pH, for example. To model more realistic population growth, scientists developed the logistic growth model, which illustrates how a population may increase exponentially until it reaches the carrying capacity of its environment. When a population's number reaches the carrying capacity, population growth slows down or stops altogether. The figure illustrates the logistic growth model. In the logistic growth model, population size levels off because the limiting resources restrain any further growth. This model applies in particular to populations that respond to density dependent factors. As you can see in the figure, the logistic growth model looks like the letter S which is why it is often called an S-curve. Temperature, light availability, and nutrients will influence the doubling rate of phytoplankton cultures, usually beginning with a short lag phase as the plant cells become acclimated to their environment. The population enters the exponential phase of growth until it approaches its carrying capacity. Based on limiting nutrient uptake, light or self-shading, and water quality parameters such as primarily pH, this is a period when the population enters its stationary phase. Finally, and nutrients are exhausted, light becomes increasingly limited and CO2 becomes exhausted, resulting in elevated pH, which may be greater than 8.5, the algal cells begin to die and the culture goes into its senescent phase. Culturists call it the crash. At that point, the phytoplankton culture rarely recovers and often becomes contaminated with bacteria and microscopic zooplankton, such as cilius. In order to measure the density of phytoplankton cells in culture, the phytoplankton culturists will use a hemocytometer. Hemocytometers are thick glass slides with two chambers on the upper surface, each measuring one by one millimeter. A special cover slip is placed over these two chambers, giving a depth of 0.1 millimeters, and therefore a total volume in each chamber of 0.1 cubic millimeters. The base of each chamber is marked with a grid to aid in counting cells within the area. To determine cell density, a single drop of phytoplankton culture is placed on the slide and is put under a microscope at 40x magnification. In each of the slides, there is, the grid has 25 separate grids which are used to make the count. Each one of these grids is 
0.2 millimeters in width and 0.2 millimeters in length. You count the number of cells in 10 randomly selected 0.2 millimeter grids and calculate the average. For example, an average of let's say 10 cells per grid. Now if you multiply the average, 10 cells, by 250, you get the number of cells per cubic millimeter. That is 0.004 millimeters cubed times 250 equals 1 millimeter cubed. That would be 10 cells times 250 or 2,500 cells per cubic millimeter. Since there are 1,000 cubic millimeters in 1 milliliter or cubic centimeter, multiply the value in the second step by 1,000 to get the number of phytoplankton cells per mil. That would be 10 times 250 times 1,000 or this culture has 2,500,000 cells per milliliter. Then the aquaculturist can simply calculate the volume of algae culture is required to provide a specific cell density in the culture tank of a given volume. Scientists often describe models with equations. The exponential growth model equation looks like dn over dt equals rn. The symbols in this equation represents concepts. Here's how to translate the equation into words. The change d in number of individuals n over a change d in time t equals the rate of increase r in number of individuals n. dn divided by dt equals rn. My name is Leroy Cresswell. I hope you have found this hands-on demonstration to be both informative and enjoyable, and thanks for watching.